is the minor divided by two. Does that look familiar to what you saw in class? Yes. Okay. So you got 126 minus 40 divided by two. That's 86 divided by two, which is 43 degrees. That's the same as this one here. And then the question is, well, is, is that, is that this here? Uh, I want to say no, it isn't, but what is it then? So it's the same as that. So if, if we know QP, okay, so we're, we're going to call QP, I'll just call that Y for the moment. The other one all the way around here is 360 minus Y. Right. So the reason I'm doing that is because you take the big one, subtract the little one, divide by two, and that equals the, the one in here that we just found, the, the 43 degrees. Now, it feels somewhat complicated how I did that. So I, I sort of feel like there might have been a better way. But again, just, just to reiterate, like, like the one on this, this one sort of outside the circle is the big one minus the little one divided by two. Uh, so this does work. Okay. But is that is that what you saw in class? I'm I'm not sure. Yes. Uh, so this equals 86. That's good. Subtract 86 from both sides. Add two y to both sides. So and we're subtracting there. So was that two? 74 equals 2y, so y equals, cut that in half, uh, 137 degrees, maybe? Um, yes, okay. All right. Um, Any questions on that? No, thank you. All right, so next question here. Get back to it. You said, sorry, just too many, too many things are open right now. Nine, nine is next. Okay, this is really similar. This one I think is actually somewhat easier than the one we just did. Because it's only the one circle. Right. So uh, figure, find the measure of angle P. So that what I was trying to get at here is, is whenever you have a, a two tangents or it could be a tangent and a, and a secant or it could be a secant and a secant, there's always kind of a major and a minor. Um, not necessarily the same as like major and minor arc, but sometimes it is. Uh, but the relationship is always that X equals big M minus little m divided by two. So in your problem, they give you, they give you A to B as a expression equation there. They give you this with X in it. So to find the other one, this one out here, it's 360 minus 15x plus 33. Right. Okay, so uh, a couple of ways to, to do this, but it's just like the last one. You're going to take this, this big one, the 360 minus 15x minus 33, and then you're going to subtract the 15x plus 33, divide it by 2, and that's going to equal 6x. So this is just a really messy algebra equation. Um, the numerator, you distribute that negative to both. It ends up being 360 minus 15x minus 33 minus 15x minus 33 divided by 2 equals 6x. Like that. I'll move this equation over. So uh, 
multiply everything by two so that that becomes 12x on the right. On the left, you got to combine like terms. You got 360 minus 33 minus the other 33, so it's minus 66. This looks like 294 minus 30x equals 12x. Add 30x to both sides. And then divide by 42. And I guess that works out. Um, maybe seven. So like most problems, that's that's not the answer. That's just the intermediate. Like most problems, that's just the intermediate answer. So that's seven. You have to then put that back in to 6x to find the measure of angle P. Measure of angle P is 6x or 6 times 7, which is 42 degrees. Okay. What uh, what about this is uh, maybe complicated or unclear? Or, you know, give me some feedback, I guess. Um, um, I thought that was good. Um, I think um, setting up the or remembering the um, big angle minus the small one and then dividing it by two, I think that part was like setting it up was hard. Yeah, it, it's uh, they they always give you enough information. It's just that there's always something to do to get that you know missing information. Well, a lot of times in your book, you'll have to multiply by three sixty or take three sixty and subtract the the other side there. Right. All right. So that's number nine. Go back to number. Eleven. Okay, number eleven. All right, here we go. Radius of circle Z is six. So that means Z to A is six. Z to W is six. Uh, gives that WX arc. This arc appears 120 degrees. That means A is an inscribed angle to that. So if you draw it without all the other stuff, you can sometimes see it better. The inscribed angle is half there. Is that okay? Yes, okay. All right, so that's helpful here. Now, do you know what kind of triangle this is? Or do you know what this, maybe this angle measure of X is? It's, a, it's um, 90. It is 90, yeah. Very important that you know that because this is now a 30, 60, 90 triangle. This is 30. So again, sometimes you to just draw it off to the side, even if it's not to scale. Uh, this is 12. This is the 30 degree, 60 degree. So the, the um, in the 30, 60, 90, the hypotenuse is double the, the short leg. And the short leg is across from the 30. So this is six. Okay. Did we, did we spend some time on that? I, I really, you know, the lessons sometimes blend together where I can't remember if it was you. I think it was, but. Yes, we did. Okay. And, and the long leg is six root three, because you multiply the short leg by the square root of three. Right. Okay, so AX, AX is this short leg. I mean, it, it could have, it could have, for example, asked you for WX as well, you know, to find the long leg. The perimeter means to find uh, all three sides added together. So your perimeter here is 12 plus 6 plus 6 root 3, which is 18 plus 6 root 3. Okay.
any questions, thoughts on that or anything? It's kind of a blend of everything we've been doing, but. Okay. Um, no, thank you. Okay. All right, give me just 30 seconds here. I need to quickly do something. Do you have some other things you want us to work on today? Because we're obviously going to get through this pretty pretty quickly here. Um, I think that's it now. Okay. All right. Let me uh, jump back to our window here. All right. So number... Number 12, number 12 here. Do you feel like class has gotten easier? Um, not necessarily because of the tutoring, but just is the content any easier for you? Maybe, yes, no? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I, I like hearing that. I I, I think sometimes uh, you, we get this dread of geometry because all the proofs and weird weirdness from the beginning. All right, so M is the midpoint of AB. Find the measure of CD. Okay. Uh, right. So the uh, interesting, kind of interesting, cool problem here. The um, we just draw this part up here at the top. The BCM like that. Do you see that it's an inscribed angle there? Yes. So that means that this one right here, M to B is just double that. It's two times X plus seven. Right. Okay. Is that okay? Yes. All right. And then um, the same thing could be done over here. This, this uh, A to M is double two times three X minus 31, we can double that. And since M is the midpoint, you can set those two expressions equal to each other, okay? Now you actually didn't need to do all that. Like, like they're trying to step you through this, but it's it's actually known that in this scenario, these are, the, these are congruent because you can see the twos actually cancel. Um, but, you know, in short here, you're going to solve for X. Okay, so you, the twos can cancel, but could you solve this for uh, for x for us first, please? Um, yes. Um, okay, X equals 19. Yes. Okay, now the reason we wanted X, I didn't, I didn't say this, but the reason we want X is because um, to find CD, you need to know this angle right here, angle M, which is 4X minus 15. That's why you need X. Because, again, that's another inscribed angle. And notice I keep drawing these without all the other lines because they're distracting. Right. Yeah. So if you once you find this angle right here, you double it to find the measure of arc uh, CD. So can you do that for us, please? Yes. Um, one twenty-two. Yeah. Yep. Sounds. Wait. Um. Hmm. I'm gonna use the calculator. <laughs> uh. Yes, one twenty-two is correct for this one. 
and it is in degrees. I don't know if you've been doing that. The X is just a number, but the arc length is in degrees. That does, that really does matter. Right, okay. All right, uh, so I guess we'll move on to 16 here. You can always kind of tell how complicated a problem is when they like, have to give you a big setup to find it. And I feel like 16 does that. There's like a yeah. big fix to commence to begin to start here um, with that. All right, circles O and P are tangent at F. Okay, that's nice. AC, AC and CE are tangent to circle. P at B and D, okay. Uh, that might come into play. Uh, probably does. Like maybe because those are 90 degree angles there. Not sure. Um, D, F, B. So D to F to B is 223. So I'm, I'm going to actually draw that smaller circle here. Okay. And and DFB is 223. And that means this other one over here, B to D, is 360 minus that. Is that okay? Yes. Um, 137 degrees. Yeah. Okay. To find this angle right in here, we'll call that X for the moment and I'll, I'll draw it over here. X, you got M, little M and big M. Do you agree that we can find X now because we have big M and little M? Yes. Okay, so we're going to take big M, subtract little m, divide by 2 to find x. So 223 minus 137 divided by 2. Can you calculate that for us, please? Yes. Um, 43. 43, good, okay. Now, I, I sort of know where we're going this problem, but, but maybe, maybe you're not quite sure here. I'm always looking to the thing we're trying to find A to E, and it's like, what do I wanna to know to find A to E? Well, to find A to E, if I knew the inscribed angle, I would be able to find it. And because it's inscribed there, you just double it to find the lesson there. Okay. Any questions on that? Follow up? Anything to clarify? Um, no, thank you. Okay. You're very polite. I appreciate that. <laughs> but really, if it's unclear, please just say, you know what, Matthew, that was awful. That was the worst description ever. Um, I'll cut that out of the YouTube. And <laughs> we'll, we'll go on from there. But, but uh, you know, this is this is our time to, uh, uh, you know, figure out like this stuff here. And um, one thing I will, I kind of alluded to this earlier, is is there's there's the tangent tangent situation. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the everything we've been doing also applies to a secant secant situation. And then it also applies if you've got a tangent and a secant. Everything we've just done uh, applies to that. So uh, all three scenarios you might might see. Right, okay. Okay, so is there anything else you'd like to work on today? Um, I don't have anything, no. Okay. Um, 
how's chemistry going? Um, it's good. Have you are you guys past stoichiometry in your class? Yes. Okay. Are you doing like uh aqueous solutions, breaking those apart? What do you yes. guys kind of okay? So if you ever need help in chemistry, my help is limited to kind of the math numbers stuff. Um so keep that in mind. Like if you ever want some help, I'm happy to, but I'm more of the you know, calculations type. Right. Thank you. All right. Well, we can, I mean, we can stop here if you, if you'd like, um, totally up to you. Um, sure. Yeah. Okay. Are you, are you absolutely sure? Nothing else I can help you with. I'm just asking. I mean, obviously I like the breaks too, but. Right. Um, nothing else. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much, Grace, for letting me help you today.